Hi, and welcome to the first episode of the Cognac Review. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm going to use this time to introduce the channel. Uh, today is not uh, the day that I'm actually going to start tasting. I'm going to do that tomorrow when I introduce um, common tasting notes, their definitions, um, and different like best practices, like the best temperature to serve cognac, the best type of glass, um, and different ways of just um, sampling and tasting things that you haven't tasted before. But today I want to introduce the channel, um, what it is that I plan to do, what I want to be about, um, and what this will look like going forward. Uh, so we do have, um, it's going to be done in three prongs. The first will be the standard at-home tasting channel. I pour myself a glass, I sip it, I tell you what I think about it. Um, maybe I compare it to another, maybe I don't. Um, but at any rate, just your standard tasting, here's my review, here's my two cents. The second prong will be done in the store. Uh, this is where I hope that, I hope, as I go to independent liquor stores or maybe Total Wine, um, would be my real big hope here, that they allow me to work in the aisle and actually video myself creating content where I recommend what I have tasted to other customers. Um, specifically, I'm looking for those who come in for the Hennessy every single week or every single party. You know, have you tried uh, Cavolcier? Am I even pronouncing that right? I don't know. We'll do that in the next video. Um, or have you tried ABK6 or have you tried this or that? Um, I really want to look for those brand loyal customers and just see if I can turn them onto something different using my knowledge and experience. Um, and the third prong, I would eventually like to get into um, cognac tastings or whiskey tastings or you know other spirits, wines, beers, whatever. Um, and I'd like to do that virtually, um, virtually or in person. Um, we'll see as you know the economy kind of opens back up and people get their vaccines and things like that. Um, but the first, of course, is always just your at-home tasting. You want to know what it is I think about this. Um, and to tell you why I want to start with cognac, it is my personal opinion, um, and I am not an expert, I'm just a liquor store employee, but it is my personal opinion that cognac will be the next big thing to take off. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've really seen tequila just skyrocket. You went from... If you go into the store, you'd see maybe like a couple of shelves or maybe a little bit more. Um, and now it's taking up entire aisles. Um, you're seeing Mezcal do the same thing, just exploding. It's questionable if the Agave Farms can keep up forever. It's definitely questionable if American palates will remain consistent over the long term. And other than desiring sugar, and sweetness, which is what cognac has, it is a guaranteed bet that the American palate will change over time. Um, and I'd like to see it go in this direction. Um, again, cognac is really, it's just a grape wine that's been distilled. Um, so you really do get the sweetness on it. I think that appeals to a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> the other reasons uh, why I believe that cognac will be the next big thing is because it is really the younger crowd that seeks after it. It seems to be, and I don't know the statistics here, maybe there's a way to find that out, but it seems to be like that 21 to 30, and then for some reason just like 65 and over. Like my grandma drank brandy each night before bed, you know, and that's not an uncommon thing. Um, but for the most part, it's really the younger crowds that's coming in and getting the Hennessy and things like that. <clears throat> if the younger crowd, if their palates change, if they're persuaded in a new direction or to try different things, that will drive culture, that will drive um, that market forward. So I think there's a lot of room for opportunity in the cognac um, category. Again, also um, because there's not that many popular options. There's Hennessy, uh, Cavalcier, Remy Martin, um, and I'm forgetting one other here. Um, and then I really like this one, ABK6. But there's not that many options, yet there's a lot of options on the shelf. Um, so if any time that somebody finds a new favorite, suddenly um, that market has kind of changed. I think that's really cool and important. 
Um, and yeah, I'm looking at my notes here. I'm not just staring down. Um, kind of last but not least, I think the uh, American palette and style of drinking has evolved and will continue to evolve. I, we can see this in the whiskey aisle. Um, it's not just Jack Daniels anymore. You know, it's not just American turkey or, you know, whatever. But people are coming in for the rare, for the allocated. Uh, they're coming in for the unique bottles. They know if they want intense flavor or if they want a more subtle flavor. Uh, they know caramel over oak. They know rye over wheat or corn or whatever. And as we all kind of become more nerdy, I guess, in our hobbies, um, I think that'll expand over into the other uh, spirit categories as well, and cognac being one of those. Cognac is a digestive, uh, which means it's good for digestion. It's something that you have after dinner. That's when it's intended to be drank. I think we're just bougie enough as a culture that we can probably get into digestives and I think that practice could really take off. Personally, I'm trying to drive that practice forward. And if you want to be part of that movement, then I all the better, you know, hit like, subscribe, um, drink some cognac yourself. My hope is eventually I can maybe start sending like uh, tulip glasses or uh, samples of Hennessy to my fans. Uh, first video here, so it's kind of funny to say my fans uh, will see here. Uh, but I want to end to uh, just... You know, always enjoy your company more than the drink and enjoy the drink more than drinking. Uh, just enjoy all things in moderation and you can have a really good time. Thanks.